When I learned that I was chosen as the youth speaker, I was very excited and grateful of this opportunity. But my brain instantly formulated a set of topics for the speech. And I started drafting it a week ago. I needed to pull several all-nighters just to find the most interesting story to share with you today. However, despite the nine days of my preparation, it was only in the final five to six hours before the deadline that I actually started and finished writing a talk that I am proud of. Now, you may wonder, what did I do during the past week then? Why did I need to pull several all-nighters when I only started writing the speech on the last day? Those were the same questions that my family and friends asked me as I prepared for the speech. To be honest, the answer can be quite simple. I spent the entire week conceptualizing, questioning, drafting, revising, reconceptualizing, revising again, consulting, deleting everything, and starting over. It was an endless cycle of mayhem. No matter how many different angles I looked at, none of them felt natural. I wasn't satisfied. I wasted a lot of time to the point that I almost gave up. All because of overthinking. Now, I want to ask you guys, the audience, who among you are overthinkers? <laughs> All right, there's, there's a lot. So, I think you know the feeling when you can't decide what to eat for lunch, what college course you'll be taking, or university you'll be going to, or what other people think about you. On the flip side, I always, I, all, I wanted to ask you again, who among you likes to do things at the last minute? Yeah. Those people who are given a month of preparation for, let's say, a research paper or a paper, and then magically pass it exactly 11.59 p.m. on the night of the deadline. Overthinking and cramming. These two are both harmful on their own. Logically speaking, mixing these two negative things can lead to a catastrophe. But surprisingly, the only reason I'm standing here in front of you today is because of my incredible talent for cramming. <laughs> yes, I am an overthinker, but I'm also a crammer. That is why I'm here to tell you today how cramming can be the solution for an overthinker's mind and how it helped me gain momentum in the midst of mayhem. Mayhem refers to the state of disorder. We often experience a sense of disorder when we become stressed by our problems. It could be during our final season, when we have multiple subjects to study, or when a cup, or simply when a cup of coffee gets spilled. All people get stressed about their problems, right? But overthinkers like me not only get stressed about these problems, but also things that are beyond our control. As a professional overthinker, I have noticed recurring themes which I want to share with you today. First, overthinking can paralyze our ability to decide. One of the biggest hurdles I had faced in writing this speech was the abundance of my ideas. My ideas were spontaneous, leading my ideas were leading from one idea to another and so on. As a result, my nine days of preparation were, yeah, wasted. But this struggle is not only limited to writing speeches. It's actually something that we see in our daily lives. Whether it's choosing what to wear today, what to say to other people, we are all paralyzed to decide from the fear of making the wrong decision. However, it's not also bad to take your time to reflect on your decisions, but what makes it counterintuitive 
is when you can focus on one option at a time. Remember that you're only human. There is little time for an abundant amount of ideas and opportunities. Simply, you put a lot of energy, but little result is gained. Overthinking, aside from paralyzing our ability to decide, also hinders our ability to live in the present. As an overthinker, I hold myself to unrealistic standards, making me constantly aim for perfection in every aspect of my life. This tendency led me to dissatisfaction and constant questioning of my abilities. I asked myself, will this speech be ever good enough? Will people actually resonate with my words? Overthinking can become a tiring task that it takes the joy of the present moment. Being preoccupied with the future prevented me from actually enjoying the process of my first drafts. And instead, I became fixated on the end result. So the good question now is, how did I break free from these patterns? How did I manage to find the momentum in this chaos? The answer lies in embracing the practice of the art and talent of cramming. Now, before you dismiss this idea and think that, oh, I am advocating for poor time management or last minute work, let me explain first. Cramming, as perceived by others, refers to studying or preparing for something in a short period of time. Yes, it's often associated with stress and panic, but I want to challenge this perception today. I believe that cramming, when used strategically and intentionally, can be a powerful tool for overthinkers. Let me share with you three reasons why. First, cramming sets urgency. When, fa when faced with a tight deadline, there's no luxury of time for excessive contemplation or indecision because it forces us to make quick decisions and eliminate ideas that don't matter. For me, in the final hours before the deadline of the speech, my time constraint became a catalyst for action. It pressured me to finish this piece finally. Now, secondly, cramming forces us to strategize. To strategize. Now, when time is limited, we are forced to strategize on how to use it by making substantial trade-offs. In my case, I had to decide on the core message I wanted to convey to you, the audience. I had to let go of the countless ideas that were floating in my mind and choose the ones that would have the most impact, those, the ones that will be more relatable to you. Now, by embracing cramming as a strategy, overthinkers like me can prioritize their thoughts and actions. It pushes us to step out of our comfort zones, make tough decisions, and focus on what truly matters. Thirdly, cramming puts us in the zone. Being in the zone is a state in which a person is fully immersed in an activity. A state of heightened creativity and productivity. For me, when I finally sat down to write this speech, knowing that time was running out, something magical happened. The pressure and the adrenaline kicked in as I entered the state of flow. Ideas flowed effortlessly, words came out naturally, and I experienced a deep sense of satisfaction in the process. When cramming immerses you in this flow state, you can compress all the brain power spent in maybe weeks of thinking in a shorter period of time with the same result. Now, you may be asking, how do we use this knowledge in real life? The answer is to set deadlines. We don't necessarily need to cram tasks on the actual deadline, but rather, we can do it on our personal deadlines. In this sense, we are still cramming but without the risk of submitting late on the actual due date. In a simpler setting like, let's say, studying, we can employ methods like the Pomodoro Technique. This is because we are forced to have a 25-minute deadline every time. It makes time tangible as if we 
are literally running out of it. On the other side, for long-term goals, we can consider the duration of the specific phases in our lives as the actual deadline. And then we can set personal deadlines for the things that we want to do. It's like having a bucket list for our senior high period that only lasts two years. Because of this limited time, we can put more value in the presence. For instance, instead of being too preoccupied with our future colleges and career, why don't we cherish the present moment, the last term of our senior high school? Personally, I utilize the concept of cramming to maximize my potential. Engaging in high-intensity and time-pressured activities such as debating and direct, directing technical productions, this helped me develop skills in impromptu speaking and making split-second decisions. These experiences led to my success in maybe extracurricular endeavors, uh, academic endeavors as well, and the best of them all, become a professional grammar. Cramming, however, is, isn't only a solution to overthinking, but it can also be an avenue to discover oneself. As the youth, we are struggling to navigate the maze called self-identity. But what if I tell you that cramming can clear this cloud of confusion? How so? Well, cramming can ultimately reveal who we are and what we value the most. Because it activates our reflexes, our instincts. It is like a fight or flight response where we subconsciously choose to do the action that we are familiar with. Because when we cram something, maybe a paper or a project, our first instinct is to show our true nature. Aside from this, cramming can also be a tool for self-actualization. Sometimes we are actually surprised by the things we can do when we are cramming. For me, it was making the speech and also memorizing the speech that I was surprised that I can actually push my boundaries because of cramming. Simply, the force of cramming destroys the barriers that prevents us from discovering our capabilities. In a world that emphasizes careful planning and preparation, I stand here in front of you as an advocate for the power of cramming. And remember, sometimes the best ideas, the most authentic stories, and the greatest achievements does not come from careful planning and excessive contemplation, but from the moments when we trust ourselves to dive in and give it all. I am Christian Daniel Oligario, a professional crammer and overthinker, and this is my story on how I gained momentum in mayhem. Thank you. Thank you.